In this demo, we will look at the migration of a containerized application to Azure AKS cluster. The source that we will be using is a Google GKE cluster and the application that we will be migrating is a Blogger application, WordPress. Let us first look at the source cluster. Here is our source GKE cluster. It is a regional cluster located in US Central One region. Let's look at the dashboard that we have deployed for this cluster. Here, we have created a namespace named WordPress, wherein we have deployed the WordPress application. Here, we have a deployment. We have few parts, a replica set and a stateful set. The front end of the WordPress application is created using a deployment and the back end of the application that is the MariaDB database is created using a stateful set. Hence, this demo will be helpful in demonstrating the migration for both stateful as well as stateless applications. Also, let us have a look at the storage configuration. So under persistent volume claims, we have two persistent volume claims. And the storage class which is used is the standard storage class. This is a storage class provided for GKE clusters. Let's go to services and let's try to access WordPress. So this is the page that we have created on the source side. Now let's check the target cluster. Here is our target cluster. That is our Azure AKS cluster. It is located in South Central US region. The Kubernetes version is 1.22.6. Let's see the dashboard for this cluster. Here, we have created a namespace named demo target. We will be using this namespace to sync the application from the source cluster namespace. So as we expect, as of now, there are no workloads present in this namespace. If we check the secret in both the source as well as target cluster, we have created a secret. This is an image pool secret, which is used to pull an image from a container registry. This image, we call it TRI, which stands for transient Rackware agent image. It is used by Swift to create an instance that is a pod, which we call as the tripod on the source as well as the target cluster. And this is used for staging purposes. In the newer release of Swift, this step of creating secret is also automated. Hence, we would not be required to pre-create these secrets on the source and target cluster. Swift will do this for us. Let us now take a look at our Swift instance. We have our Swift running on Azure Cloud. We launched this instance from the Azure Marketplace with just a few clicks. So it is located in the South Central US region. So once Swift is launched and running, we can access the Swift UI at this public IP address. So this public IP address followed by slash Swift slash dashboard is where we can access the Swift UI. Also, we need to create a password for the admin user, and then we can use the username password to log into Swift. For more details about the operations and the prerequisites, we can use the two guides available here. Now, let's log into Swift. So as of now, we do not have any clusters discovered. Hence, Swift will land us on the Container Cluster Administration page. This page lists all the discovered clusters. Let's go ahead and discover our source cluster first. Here, we need to provide a friendly name for the cluster. Then in cloud type, we have selected Google GCP as it is a Google GKE cluster. Here, we need to provide the cluster name as it is present in the GCP cloud. Then we need to select if it is a regional cluster or a zonal cluster. In our case, it is a regional cluster, hence we select the region here. Then we need to select the private key file for the GCP account. And we need to provide tripod image and tripod image secret that we will be deploying in the cluster's namespace to be used in sync. Let's click on add. So 
So here Swift has successfully discovered the source cluster. We can expand this. Under the summary tab, we can find all the details of the discovered cluster. Under the namespace tab, we can find the list of namespaces on the cluster. We can further expand the namespaces to find list of objects deployed in the namespace. The filter is by default set to pod. We can select other objects. So we can select other objects here to find the list of the objects present in the namespace. Similarly, we will go ahead and discover the target cluster as well. Here, we have provided a friendly name for the cluster. Cloud type this time will be Azure. Then the cluster name in the cloud. Rest, cloud specific details. The resource group where the cluster is deployed. And the tripod image and secret. We click on add. Now we have the source and the target clusters discovered with us. Now we are ready to perform sync from the source cluster to target cluster namespace. So let's go to the all replications tab under sync administration. We click on new application replication. We will be performing a pass through type of sync, which does not involve any local backup to be taken on Swift. Let's select the source cluster, the namespace that we need to migrate. Under applications, we can select all applications or selective applications. In case of selective applications, we can provide only few applications that we need to sync. So if we provide the PVCs for a particular application only, it will find all the other dependencies and sync them along. In our case, as we have only one application, let's select all applications. Then we will select the target cluster, the target namespace where we need to migrate. Then we need to select a storage class and the zone. The next set of options is the tripod options. Let's keep the IP type to be load balancer for both the source and target tripod. Also, we need to provide ports for the tripod. So for auto select ports, if we have this range whitelisted in our cloud firewall, we can select auto select ports. Else, we need to provide specific ports. Swift will go ahead and open these ports. Let's provide a name for the job. In the advanced options section, in pre post sync config tab, we can find a set of pre and post YAML files for the source cluster and pre and post YAML file for the target cluster. The pre YAML files will be executed on the source and target cluster pre sync, and the post YAML files will be applied on the source and target clusters post sync. Also, we have a section for pre post sync script, wherein we can provide a pre script and a post script, along with parameters for the scripts, that is arguments for these scripts. These scripts will be executed pre and post scripts on the Swift machine. Under the try CPU memory config tab, we can provide request and limits for the CPU and memory that will be used by the tripod on the source and the target clusters. Under the image registry config tab, we can provide image registry mapping. In case we have the application on the source using images from a particular container registry, and we want the application on target to use images from a different container image registry, then we can provide image mapping here. And for the same, we provide image pull secret mapping as the pull secrets for the images will be different on the source and target side. 
Then under the Kubernetes service config tab, we can select services and change the type of the service on the target side. Similarly, we can change the node port of the service on the target side. We can either provide a specific port or we can simply randomize the port. Under volume sync config tab, if we choose to include volumes, then we can include a particular set of volumes only. And if we select to exclude volume specs, then Swift will exclude that list of volumes from syncing. Now, let's go ahead with these general options and say add. So the sync has started. We can see the job name here, the source cluster name, the target cluster name. Here we can see the live status of the sync. So currently it is rediscovering the source and target cluster. Now it is taking a snapshot of the persistent disk on the source side. Let's wait for the sync to complete. The sync is now completed. We can expand this job. Under the summary tab, we can see the details of the sync job. We can see the time at which it started, the time at which it ended, the source cluster name, the target friendly name, and the command which was issued at the backend for performing the sync. Under the object sync statistics tab, we can see the count of objects that Swift synced. Under the data sync statistics tab, here under summary, we can see the amount of data that was transferred during the sync. And under the volume sync summary tab, we can see the details of the volumes that were synced. So here, uh, there were two volumes that were synced. The sync progress tab shows the sync checkpoints, that is steps of the sync in detail one by one. And if there are any warnings during the sync, those are highlighted in the warnings tab. Let us now go to the target cluster dashboard and check if WordPress is up and running. So here in the demo target namespace, we can see that we have WordPress deployment running. Let's go to services and try to access WordPress at the target side. So we can see here that WordPress has successfully been replicated to the target cluster. We can go to the source clusters dashboard and also check if WordPress is still running at the source side. So here under WordPress namespace, WordPress is still up and running without any issues. So hence, Swift successfully migrated the containerized application from Google GKE cluster to Azure AKS cluster.